Research is always coming out with new studies to improve our health and help make achieving our goals so much easier. And just recently, three new studies unlocked some major and simple tools that can make you lose fat faster, feel more satisfied from your food, and get better results than simply counting calories. Well, let's dive into it. My name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance, and today's video is sponsored by Kettle and Fire. More on them in a bit. Okay, this first study is for the pasta lovers out there. Because researchers found that there are actually some pastas that help you to feel more full and more satisfied and then ultimately eat less later in the day because you are feeling more satisfied from your food. This is a huge factor for weight loss because when you aren't feeling hungry, when you feel satisfied from your food, you're much less likely to crave food that works against your goals. And a lot of people love pasta, but unfortunately just typical pasta usually isn't in line with most people's wellness goals because it can cause such a big spike and fall in blood sugar and leave you feeling ravenous after the meal. It's also just very high glycemic load and ultimately not very satiating. But this study unlocks some little pasta hacks. This study compared typical durum wheat pasta to a couple legume-based pastas like lentil and chickpea. The study had all participants eating an equivalent total amount of calories of each type of pasta, and then it monitored how much people ate at their next meal. And the study found that the lentil pasta and the chickpea pasta resulted in eating a lot less at the next meal, even as high as 200 calories less than the durum wheat pasta group. These pastas also resulted in feeling more satisfied and less hungry. So why is this happening? Well, when you look at the breakdown of each of these pastas, the lentil pasta and the chickpea pasta are going to be a lot higher in both protein and fiber. Protein and fiber are both needed to help raise our satiety hormones. Protein helps to raise peptide YY. Fiber helps to act on the stretch mechanism in our stomach, which tells our brain we're full and satisfied, but it also can help to raise our satiety hormone GLP-1. Both protein and fiber also help to stabilize our blood sugar levels so you don't get that big crash, resulting in that sensation of hanger immediately after the meal. This whole combination is likely why the lentil pasta and the chickpea pasta resulted in a lot less hunger and therefore eating less at the next meal. In fact, in my body recomposition program, which is the program that I use to help me lose 20 pounds postpartum, we actually have a lentil pasta recipe within there for that exact reason. It is a lower to medium glycemic load pasta. So it is much more in line with a weight loss and fat loss goal, which the body recomposition program was such a hit when we first released it last summer. The community loved it. There's so many great recipes, so much great information especially if you're looking to achieve a body recomposition goal. So if you want to check it out, I'll have it pop up right here somewhere. It was by far my favorite program that I had created so far. Now, one thing to note, if you are using lentil or chickpea pasta, just make sure not to view it as the whole meal. So not just having like lentil and chickpea pasta with like tomato sauce, that's still going to be lacking in protein, even though the lentil pasta and the chickpea pasta does have some protein, it's not going to be a huge amount. It's still going to be substantially higher in carbohydrates than it is going to be protein. So for that reason, making like a bolognese or meatballs. Also pairing it with like a salad or some other veggies in the pasta will help to round out that meal and make it more supportive of your overall goals. Which speaking of tools that help to reduce hunger, I want to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Kettle and Fire. Kettle and Fire is my all-time favorite bone broth company. They make really high quality bone broth with bones from grass-fed cows. And they take those bones and they slowly simmer it to make sure that they're extracting as much of those minerals and collagen as possible. And collagen-rich foods paired with other high-protein foods has been found to make us feel more full and satisfied from the meal versus just having protein alone, which is why I love combining kettle and fire bone broth in a lot of my different meals, like my chili or different sauces and stews. It's a really great and easy way to sneak in a little bit of high quality whole food source collagen into pretty much any of my meals. And especially as a mom to a one and a half year old and being currently pregnant and also running my own business, I'm like very, very busy and I do not have the time to make bone broth. So knowing that I have kettle and fire in my pantry just makes my life so much easier. Plus it takes great and is really easy to add to pretty much any meal. There's even like a semi-viral like bone broth hot chocolate recipe going around. You guys should try that out too. <laughs> and Kettle and Fire is super generous and they're offering my community 20% off your bone broth purchase when you use code autumnbates at checkout. So make sure you stock up and I'll have the link down description below. Okay, the second study is for my cheese lovers out there. Now this study specifically found that cheese helps to increase muscle mass. Now if you're looking to achieve a fat loss goal, it is so important to make sure that you're maintaining, at the very least, maintaining your muscle mass during the fat loss process. Typical calorie restrictive diets result in quite a lot of muscle loss, even as high as like 30% of your weight coming from muscle, not fat. And although that might seem like it shouldn't matter because you're just seeing the scale going down, when you lose muscle, it drastically lowers your metabolism and makes it so much harder to maintain that weight loss result. It also makes it a lot easier to regain the weight that you lost. And even just from a general health perspective, having lower muscle mass really increases your risk for a lot of conditions, even like cardiovascular disease, 
falling as we age and osteoporosis. So using cheese during your fat loss journey could actually be beneficial because what this study found is that with the test group, even just nine to 12 grams of cheese added in per day, which really is not that much. That's only about 0.3 to 0.4 ounces of cheese per day. So like not even a full deadly slice of cheese. That alone helped to increase muscle mass slightly and also helped to improve grip strength, which is a huge marker of longevity when compared to the group that didn't have any cheese. Now this is likely because dairy proteins are considered one of the best at stimulating muscle protein synthesis, which just means new muscle creation. Although it is also important to note that whey, which is a specific type of milk protein, has actually been found to be the best at this versus casein, which is one that's more dominant in cheese, isn't quite as good at this. During the cheese making process, whey is usually strained out and we're mostly left with casein. Although there is typically still some whey left behind. Regardless, it's still a high quality, great source of protein as well as calcium. And clearly they did see results from even adding in a small amount of cheese, but they probably would have seen even better results by adding in some type of whey option or adding in a whole milk option that does include both whey and casein. This is why we use 100% whey protein isolate in our protein powder. Whey isolate is the lowest lactose form of whey. So it's the best whey protein for those who are lactose intolerant. In fact, even some people who thought they previously could not tolerate whey have actually been able to do quite well with our 100% whey protein isolate because it is going to be a lower lactose form of whey. A lot of other protein powders use like a whey protein concentrate, which is higher in lactose, or they'll use an even higher lactose one called milk protein concentrate. So it's just something to consider if you are using whey to help achieve your goals, especially if you are lactose intolerant or lactose sensitive. I love using our whey protein powder in our chocolate chip protein waffles. It is like the main breakfast I use during my postpartum 20 pound weight loss journey. If you want that recipe, it is so good and so simple and so easy to batch. So you have a bunch during the week. I'll have it linked right up here. Okay, the third study has a lot to do with sleep. This is basically like a prescription for you guys to sleep more <laughs> because essentially what this study found is that when you sleep more, you crave less and therefore you tend to eat less. Now the initial 2024 review of a bunch of studies found that when we have a shorter sleep duration, typically of six hours or less, it really increases our preferences for sweet foods, specifically not any other type of food. So we're not going to get an increased craving for like a steak or eggs. <laughs> Instead, it's gonna be for like chocolate and honey and other sweet foods. Shorter sleep just also has a lot of other negative side effects that can really impact your weight loss results. Short sleep can increase the hunger hormone ghrelin. It can increase the stress hormone cortisol, which also increases our cravings for sugar, but higher cortisol levels also tend to tell our body to gain weight around the belly. It can shift our preference to sweet foods. It can also shift our preference to larger portion sizes. Now on the flip side, a few studies done on increasing your sleep just by a little bit found that you can make some really big improvements. The first study found that just by increasing your sleep duration by 20 20 minutes, which really is not that much, can help to reduce your overall sugar intake the next day by 10 grams. Another study found that by increasing your total sleep by 1.2 hours every night can help to reduce your overall intake the next day by 270 calories. And this is all just a result of changing how you're sleeping. When we change our sleep, it can change our preferences. It can change how we actually interact with food, which can have really big downstream impacts on our overall weight loss, fat loss goals. So some quick tips for helping to improve your sleep and getting longer amounts of sleep is the first plan an earlier bedtime. You cannot get longer sleep if you do not actively plan to get an earlier bedtime in. The second is to take a magnesium supplement. Magnesium can help to improve our sleep quality, which overall can also help to improve our sleep. The third is to exercise early. When we exercise early, it makes it so that we are going to be a little bit more tired later in the evening, but it also doesn't spike our cortisol levels, which is our stress hormone right before bed and make it harder to fall asleep. The fourth is to not watch TV or look at your phone or laptop at least 30 minutes before bed. Looking at a bright screen, shuts off our sleep hormone melatonin and obviously makes it so we can't get great sleep. And the fifth is a really great tool and it's to go for an after dinner evening walk. Especially if you watch TV, you can then help to counter the negative impacts of looking at a screen by going for a walk outside. Exposing our eyes to darkness helps to then trigger that melatonin response so that we can get sleepy and get better sleep. Now last year after my first pregnancy, I lost about 20 pounds postpartum. So if you wanna check out exactly what I did to achieve those results, you can find it with this video right here. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.